All right, this lesson is a reminder um, about something that you've seen prior to geometry, um, and it's about Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to be studying right triangles, and we start with the Pythagorean theorem. So who is Pythagoras? Well, Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and mathematician. His theory is used to calculate the lengths of sides in a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem was developed because Pythagoras drew two squares out of the sides of the right angle. So he had two squares off the two legs and then one square off the hypotenuse. He realized that the areas of the squares of X and Y added together were equal to the area of square Z. And you can see it demonstrated here in the video as the two smaller squares collapse into the larger square. Here's another way to demonstrate. So to find the area of a square, we always multiply its width by its height. So since it's a square, the side lengths are exactly the same. So the area of square A would be A squared. The area of what was the square with side length B is B squared. And the area of square C would have been C squared. So since the heights of the squares is the same length of the sides of the original triangle, it's possible to calculate the length of any side as long as you know the other two. So this is the Pythagorean theorem. We can see that demonstration here. Um, with this water example. So the volume of the water that was in both the two smaller squares will be equal to the volume that is held in the square off the hypotenuse. So at this time, you want to get out a piece of notebook paper, and you want to write down the Pythagorean theorem, and you want to understand it in words as well as in symbols. So in a right triangle, and the key is that it has to be right. It's not an obtuse or acute. But in a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. There is your hypotenuse. Each of these are your legs. So a leg squared plus a leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So if we look at this example, H is our hypotenuse, 6 and 8 are the legs. So we have the leg squared is equal to, an, I'm sorry, a leg squared plus a leg squared is equal to a hypotenuse squared. So 36 plus 64 is equal to h squared. Combining like terms gives us 100 is equal to h squared. We need to take the square root of both sides and simplify. And we know our hypotenuse is 10. In example two, right now we have a leg is x, another leg is 9, and the hypotenuse is 15. Okay, the hypotenuse is the one that gets isolated. So we put our the legs together to get 9 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. We expand. We subtract 81 to the other side. We square root. And we simplify so that x is 12. We can use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to help us classify our triangles. So the picture we have right now, we have the orange square, which is 31.43 cubic centimeters, the green square, which is 6.35 squared centimeters. I think I said squared on the last one and the blue, which is 25.08 squared centimeters. If we combine the blue and the green together, you'll notice that it's equal to the area of the square that's off the hypotenuse. So if we look in this chart that's up here, 
Our angle created in our triangle is 90 degrees, giving us a right triangle. The area of the orange is equal to the area of the sums of the squares. So no matter how big or how small, I decide to make that right triangle. You'll notice that the second and third columns are the same. So the question becomes, what happens to the relationship between c squared and a squared plus b squared if I do not have a right triangle? So right now we have an obtuse angle down here, and we notice c squared, the orange, is greater than the green and the blue together. So we can see if that continues. Um, all right, I still have another obtuse triangle, and the area of the orange is still larger. I have another obtuse, and if we notice, every time I have an obtuse triangle, c squared is larger than a squared plus b squared. So let's see what happens when the triangle becomes acute. So now I changed my obtuse angle to an acute angle, and I'm noticing that c squared is smaller than the sums. Okay, again, I'm still an acute triangle, and c squared is smaller. All right, again, another acute, and it's smaller. So if we can calculate c squared and compare it to the sums of a squared plus b squared, we can classify the triangle as acute or obtuse. If c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, then I know I have a right triangle because it satisfies Pythagorean theorem. If, however, c squared is smaller, then I have an acute, and if c squared is larger, I have an obtuse.